This is 33-year-old Jamal Richardson, an alleged gang leader and accused murderer. And this is him behind bars, enjoying surf and turf and hamming it up for the camera, iPhone in hand. HOK criminal organization evolved from a well-known street gang in Nova Scotia, known as North Preston's Finest. Hey guys, in today's video, we'll be taking a look at the North Preston's Finest Gang, a notorious gang that has established itself as a group of pimps. The North Preston's Finest is a gang based in North Preston, Nova Scotia. It was established in the mid to late 1980s by young people of African-Canadian origin. They partake in drug trafficking and other illegal businesses. However, human trafficking is their main economic activity. Most gang experts believe that the North Preston's Finest was founded due to the hard life in North Preston, a small town with only 3,700 people and the highest concentration of African Canadians out of any community in all of Canada. When interviewed, some locals commented that violence and pimping are a regular sight for their youth. It's something they see daily. In addition to that, they have learned to accept pimps and hustlers as their role models, due to them making up the majority of their population living a good life. Geographically, North Preston is under the municipality of Halifax. Nonetheless, the community is somewhat isolated from the rest of Halifax. Discrimination and racism are said to be the major causes of their isolation. According to the locals, the white community around them has learned to generally associate the town with violence. That being said, most of the people in North Preston are regular, good citizens. Nonetheless, they have to constantly fight against economic struggle and the pimp culture. Locals mention that the North Preston's finest gang has tarnished the community's name. There was a time back in the 1780s when North Preston was among the safest places in North America for African Americans. More specifically, it was a refuge for former African American slaves and loyalists who fled the United States of America after the American Revolution. However, centuries later, since the mid-1980s to early 2000s, the NPF has operated with utmost secrecy. They have foiled almost every police attempt at revealing their members and their course of operations. The police knew they were there, but they were too slippery to arrest. The NPF is said to have an interprovincial presence. From its main base in North Preston, the gang has spread their reach to the rest of Nova Scotia, Peel region in Ontario, and even Montreal, Quebec. According to the police, the NPF has connections with outlaw motorcycle gangs like the Hells Angels. And at times, they are even contracted to do some of their dirty work. Unknown to many, criminal motorcycle gangs are also reportedly involved in the human trafficking business. The relationship between the two gangs wasn't always friendly. The two first met as competitors fighting for control over the domestic sex trafficking business in Quebec and Ontario. At the time, the motorcycle gangs controlled the trade in the regions. However, the motorcycle reign was dismantled by successive police operations. From there, the NPF eased their way onto the throne, becoming one of the few Halifax-based gangs operating in other parts of Canada. The Peel Regional Police, Canada's leading police force against human and sex trafficking, investigated and found out that NPF gang members are well-connected and highly mobile. They can easily transport themselves and their victims from one strip club or province to another. In addition to that, they are more than just pimps. According to the police, the members are violent enough to instill fear in other, independent, pimps and even gangs. The other reason why they can successfully run the human trafficking business is attributed to the fact that they are smart and highly manipulative. The NPF members are said to mostly apply their manipulative tactics to young women and girls who fall victim to their activities. According to police they start by grooming up to three or four women at a time, which involves approaching the women and girls as loving and caring boyfriends. At the start of the relationships, they treat the women well as they win over their trust. Later on in the relationship, the man will suggest the couple move together to a different location or even province and live in a motel. Upon arriving at the new location, the man will convince the woman to work in a strip club or adult entertainment venue. He promises the girl that it will help them gather enough money to buy a house and live together happily ever after. The girl agrees. In the beginning, the girl does well and brings in a couple of hundreds of dollars per night. However, things start to change, and the boyfriend she once knew transforms into her new pimp. She is now required to bring in at least $1,000 a night and not leave the club until she does so. 
Of course, that isn't a request. The boyfriend now issues threats coupled with violence if she fails to meet the requirement. As a result, the girl is forced to offer escort services to meet the target. What happens to the money she earns? She benefits nothing from it. Her pimp forcefully takes all the money from her, and the cycle goes on. That's how the gang members live off the earnings made by the countless girls they have procured into strip clubs and prostitution. For most girls, this is when they realize that their love story was a facade and that they are now slaves to the gang. On top of this, the girl or woman is usually passed around as money makers for different gang members. What if she tries to escape? Most of the time, they are caught and subjected to inhuman acts of violence. On top of that, the gang members will threaten to kill the girl's parents if she attempts to escape in the future. Sometimes, they offer a deal and promise to release the girl if she pays up a certain amount of money, usually between $5,000 to $15,000. However, this is almost impossible for the girl since they forcefully snatch all of her earnings, it's another psychological trick meant to motivate the girl to continue working with the hopes of one day buying back her freedom. Are there girls and women who have managed to escape from sex trafficking gangs like the NPF? Yes. However, the psychological effects are so deeply ingrained into them, that they usually dread reporting to the police. As a result, they live fearful lives that take a toll on their mental health and push them to drug abuse or back into a sex trafficking gang. There is one case of a woman who had successfully escaped from her handlers and reported them to the police. However, after several threats from her pursuers, she withdrew her statement and accused the police of manipulating her into submitting a false accusation. That's how deep the manipulation tactics have been imprinted on their minds. It's an example of why some police officers have labeled the gang members as psychopaths. The first major win for the police against the NPF was back in 1993 when they arrested and charged Morris Glasgow, the then alleged leader of the NPF. They found him guilty of forcibly confining and assaulting a 15-year-old girl with a stun gun and sentenced him to seven years behind bars. Since then, the Nova Scotia Royal Canadian Mounted Police and Halifax Regional Police have taken up the duty of monitoring the NPF gang. It hasn't been easy. The game of cat and mouse has lasted decades. The police had even labeled them armed and dangerous. But why are the members of the North Preston's finest so hard to identify and arrest? This is largely due to NPF members not wearing any specific colors or symbols they don't even have a logo. So far, the authorities have only been able to associate its members with neck tattoos that are sometimes difficult to make out. Two years later in 1995, the York Region Police brought forth more information about the North Preston's finest, and concluded that they are a family-based gang. Since the 2000s members are relatives to the 1990s members. In October 2007, the police witnessed another major win against the North Preston's finest. The Peel Regional Police formed a vice squad and investigated the gang's activities across strip clubs in southern Ontario. They started by checking the identification documents of all the women who worked in the strip clubs. The idea was to check and see if the girls were from the Maritimes. Additionally, they also issued public warnings to Maritime women not to trust NPF members. The month after, the police spent three consecutive weekends following some of the alleged NPF members in the Greater Toronto Area. They patiently trailed them and found out that the gang frequently transferred their victims between the clubs in Peel and Niagara. With this in mind, the police delivered the killer blow, they specifically identified NPF members and restricted them from entering strip clubs. This forced the gang to abandon operations and venture out into Western Canada. The Peel Regional Police wasn't done with the North Preston's finest. They partnered with other regional police officers and diligently followed them across cities and provinces. According to the police officers in Western Canada, the NPF gang invaded the streets and were bold enough to stake out territorial claims. The NPF gang was so powerful that it terrified the existing sex traffickers in Western Canada. They even forced them to pay for trafficking rights. Failure to do so, and they'd have to face violence. The North Preston's finest was so rampant that gang experts suggested the formation of a Canadian multi-provincial police force similar to the United States Human Trafficking Task Forces. Nonetheless, things weren't easier back in the Greater Toronto Area. Soon after the NPF left, 
other gangs like Bloods and Crips sprung up and took over the sex trafficking trade. The gangs are mostly comprised of Haitian Canadians. According to the police, they were deadlier than even the local motorcycle gangs. They didn't hesitate to kill anyone who stepped on their foot. In 2009, the police dealt with yet another case of human trafficking. This time, it was a 19-year-old woman who had been lured into Ontario by a man she met online. After meeting the man, she was introduced to another older woman who was a stripper at a local club. The older woman then introduced her to a man called William. William took the woman as his girlfriend and slowly, groomed, her in his condo. It wasn't long before she found herself being procured to strip clubs. According to her, she was never allowed to leave the house except when going to work. She once tried to escape but was unsuccessful. William caught and dragged her by the hair to her room ere he assaulted and strangled her to unconsciousness. A few weeks later, she attempted another escape. This time, she was successful and met Good Samaritans who advised her to report to the police. The York Regional Police took up the case, investigated, arrested, and charged William for assault, forceful confinement, kidnapping, and human trafficking. For the York Regional Police, this was their first ever human trafficking charge. They also found out that William was affiliated with the North Preston's finest gang. William was found guilty and sentenced to four years in jail. More recently, in 2016, the police initiated a nationwide investigation against human trafficking gangs. It was called Project Sizzle and was steered by several police departments like the RCMP, York's Regional Police, the Peel Regional Police, among many others. During the investigation, the police came across another street gang called the Heart of a King. According to the police, the Heart of a King street gang was founded in 2010. Some police authorities believe it's a branch of the North Preston's finest gang. There are even speculations that the two work together from time to time. The Heart of a King has its base of operations in Toronto Central and controls several strip clubs and other adult entertainment venues in the area. Project Sizzle was a great success. The police arrested 53 gang members and filed more than 285 charges related to human and drug trafficking. They also seized 17 firearms, 11 vehicles, drugs, jewelry, and $45,000 in cash after raiding several locations in the greater Toronto area. The operation also helped the police regain trust from the locals, they were now willing to offer more intel on the local human trafficking gangs. That's not all. The police were able to arrest two very interesting people, Jamal, Bambino, Richardson, and Kyle Sparks McKinnon. Be warned, these aren't your typical, everyday, gangsters. Both of them are reported nephews of Morris Glasgow, the alleged former boss of the North Preston's finest gang that I mentioned getting sentenced to seven years earlier. On top of that, Jamal Richardson is the alleged leader of the notorious heart of a King Street gang. The two half-brothers faced charges for the murder of two men. On January 31, 2016, three friends, Taylor and Eminus, went out to celebrate their friend's birthday. All was well until the birthday boy, Douglas, decided to approach the gangsters and ask for directions to an after-hours party. It didn't end well. According to the police, the gangsters pulled out their guns and sprayed 16 bullets outside a restaurant. Douglas survived, but, unfortunately, Taylor and Eminus died. Additionally, two pedestrians were also injured in the process. One of the survivors reported hearing the gangsters laugh as they made their gateway. <laughs> the two alleged gangsters remained in police custody as investigations went on. Their case was heard almost three years later in January 2019. An interesting photo surfaced during their trials. In the photo, Jamal was seen enjoying some lobster and steak while in jail. On top of that, he is seen holding an iPhone in his right hand with an unopened bottle of beer next to him. Seeming to have continued the same life of luxury he had when he was free. There is security footage of him wearing an expensive looking fur vest and thick jewelry, as well as a photo of him posing on a luxurious Bentley. In the end, Jamal was free of all charges related to the shooting incident. Instead, he pleaded guilty to leading a criminal group and being a pimp. He was sentenced to nine years in jail. On the other hand, his half-brother Kyle was found guilty of double murder and sentenced to life imprisonment. Without a doubt, the North Preston's finest gang has transformed North Preston into a place of irony, 
The town that was once a refuge for former African American slaves in the 1780s is now the home base for a gang that mainly deals with human trafficking. The police are tirelessly working day and night to permanently crush the North Preston's finest gang. However, only time will tell what is in store for the criminal group. As always, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Also, comment down below on what you'd like to see next. Thanks for watching, and have a good one.